Hello, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, we have a film director, Elke Margrethe Leher Kraus, if I'm correct spelling your name and surname. Okay. So, uh, as you know, uh, you can ask questions, you can ask everything uh, what you want, and uh, we already have a few questions here, and I'm for sure, I for sure will ask uh, them the director, but you still have uh, the possibility to, to ask during all the Q&A sessions, so if you don't know where to ask, it's, uh, it's a place uh, above in, on your right, so ask what you want, you can also ask in Lithuanian, I will uh, translate it to English, so uh, so Elke uh, is joining us from Berlin, and uh, my name is Davila. I am one of the uh, uh, programmers of uh, Film Festival Inconvenient Films, and uh, I just wanted to say that yesterday we had a live screening uh, of uh, your film uh, in Contemporary Arts Center, and uh, some people came, not some, more than uh, when a few people came to me and they wanted to say thank you for the film. And uh, they ask a few questions. I have them written, and I'll also ask them uh, during our Q and A session. And if you you can also write not just questions, the viewers who joined us, but also you can write something about the film which you want to uh, Elka to know. And uh, so all the questions will be asked. But uh, I will I want to start from from beginning, and uh, so I will start, and then everybody could join. So, uh, Elke, I know that uh, you are from the area where this film was shot, and uh, so that means that you know the topic, uh, you see, you saw the trailers long before the film, and uh, uh, could you tell me uh, when and why you decided that this could be the theme of your new film, of your project? Um, well, uh... I left um, my town when I was 18 and went studying to Switzerland and to Cuba and to Cologne. I passed a long time not visiting my hometown. And then once I came back as a filmmaker and um, was driving down the road, it was in, little, in the middle of the night. And um, by then I totally had forgotten about the love mobiles. They were not in my mind anymore, but then I was driving down the road and then suddenly, um, on the side of the road, this image of a woman from Africa uh, sitting in this caravan in, in the middle of really nowhere, it's uh, in the middle of dark, in a dark forest, um, appeared and who was, who was um, put out there as a sex worker or working for other people as a prostitute. And so this kind of really shocked me and I thought, um, this is such a strong image, which is uh, shows so much and in one image uh, about uh, society and uh, what goes wrong in a society. And um, so I decided I wanted to approach this image and as a topic. And that's when I started researching um, for, for the film. But it was not the idea of, um, it was not a thematic approach. It was not like, okay, I want to make a film about sex workers or prostitutes and it led me there. It was like this very strong image, which for me is like a, an image about a global capitalism where, about this dead end of a, a globalized capitalism, um, yes. So we have a question, how much time did it take to, uh, to make a movie? And I know the answer and I will um, say, uh, I will add to this question. So how much time? And uh, so, and, and then I know that it, it took three years. And uh, could, could you tell us more about that research and how you got to know the woman, how you gained their trust, how you got the permission? Yeah. And uh, yes. How this access, how did you got the access? Yeah, um, it took actually a little longer than three years, but we had three years um, of shooting, which means one year of research and then two years of, um, of shooting. And then one more year uh, for the editing process. Um, yes, actually we started very simple with the first idea was, hey, let's just go and knock on the door, <laughs> you know, and so we, knocked the door on the door of the caravans and um, 
we got to talk to many of the women and we we had nice talks but of course nobody was waiting for a film team there uh, to come and make a film about them so um, we had nice conversations but it was not that anybody wanted to be our protagonist um, because as you might assume most uh, women are there be are there but their families back home don't, don't know they are not uh, they don't want to you know other people to know they they are working there and so um it was a it was very complicated but then we uh, were shooting all together we had the chance to shoot with six women and um but only three kind of made it into the film, which is for a dramaturgical reason, but also because the film is already 120 minutes, almost two hours. And um, also because I had to focus on one kind of um, three strong protagonists, which are the three that are in the film now. I also had one other woman who was very, very interesting and very, very great uh, person and protagonist. She was a German who decided at the age of 60 that she wanted to realize her dream and become a sex worker. And so she rented one of these cars, but it is it was a completely different story. It was um, the story of a woman um, who does it, uh, who, who wants to become a sex worker because she really loves that, but she had other problems. So, um, it was a great story, but it did not fit together in the film because you always have to um, draw draw a line between um, women who like it, uh, who, who like being a sex worker and who see it as a job and women who are like there for human trafficking in the worst cases, cases but also who are there because of some, some most of the time economic necessities and some some force who, who drew them there. And so my film is supposed to, to focus on these gray zones, you know, about on these women who are there. They are not really there because they are forced and chained, but they are there because there are other forces who, who make them stay there. And even if they might get the chance to get out, they can't for for many reasons, and you know, to show these, these, all these layers and all these gray zones who, who make it so complicated, the whole subject. Um, I'll ask about other characters of the film. We have a few uh, questions which are quite similar about the clients who are coming to these girls. So, uh, the questions are: You filmed a few of the clients. Uh, were they real clients or stage actors? Uh, who gave the impression of a real client? And uh, uh, about the same um, uh, part, uh, so did the man customers who were featured agree to be on camera? Mm -hmm. um, yes, they all agreed. And I, everybody who was, who, who appears in this film, I gave everybody, I gave like four weeks to think about it if they really want to be in the film after the filming. So they really had the chance to sleep over it and um, maybe come to their, to their senses, but um, actually just one person withdrew um, their permission. And most of the clients are um, people or uh, how did, what's the English word are clients, um, the girls knew before who come regular. Like Regular clients. Yes, regular clients. And um, so they already knew knew, the, knew them. And um, also one client um, just appeared in the middle of the night and um, wanted to be in the film and um, wanted to shoot with us. So there were so many different um, situations we had. And, um, but in the end, we never had a problem finding men who wanted to perform in our film. Um, they are all real. They are all, um, they all knew, of course, before that we, we are going to film this and this will be published. But there are many people, who, many guys who really didn't have a problem with um, showing themselves um, going there to a sex. Why, why do you think 
it was the case? Because it, uh, prostitution is legal in uh, Germany, why do you think it's the case? That's the psychology of, of a man. <laughs> um, yes, first of all, prostitution is uh, legal in Germany. So um, they knew they were not doing anything um, against the law. And also in this kind of milieu, um, going to a sex work or going to a prostitute is nothing to be ashamed of. Um, it's something you, you do, you know, you go there and um, some of them actually even thought it was cool um, and, you know, wanted to shoot with them and then told their friends and their friends were calling us, hey, my, my friend told me you're shooting a film, can I come by too? And we we're like, no, no, not this kind of film. Um, so it just was, um, it's a different kind of milieu you step into and um, you kind of have to get to know the rules. So prostitution and sex work is just something that is God given and has to be there and there's nothing uh, against it. So um, it's, it's different. They don't see the problems. They don't see the needs of the girls. They don't see that they are not there because it's, it's uh, their dream job. Um, it's a big, big problem, I think. We have a few questions about security. Uh, my question is, did you film um, uh, characters in the same um, caravans uh, where they were working? And then we have questions about the security of your filming crew. So have you been uh, threatened by other hustlers? And what were the threats? Maybe what were the other threats if you had one? Mm -hmm. Like uh, we with Rita, we were shooting in the same caravan she was, but with Milena, we um, we were shooting in a different place because uh, for her it would have been too dangerous to shoot in the place where she was actually working. So we kind of changed changed the place where she was sitting. Um, we, because we did not know what's going to happen to our protagonist after we are finished with our shooting, you know. And so we kind of um, moved the place around um, to, to, to um, kind of get more security for her after our shooting is done. And um, then um, what was the other question about the crew? Uh, about the threat, uh, have you been threatened oh, by yes. other hustlers and yes, yes, other friends? Like uh, we are, I can really say we have been shooting with the nice guys that are around. There were also some pimps, you can really call them pimps, who were threatening us, who were not like one. We, we tried to talk to their girls, they really call them their girls. And um, the girls were totally scared. They don't speak any German. They were communicating with little flip charts. They showed on the window where they say the prices, you know, um, oral sex is 30, um, other sex like 50 euros. So they didn't speak any German. And um, the moment we came there, um, her the pimp appeared and, and threatened us. And we just, there was no chance to, get uh, in contact with the girls. And um, so we moved on. And um, the police and everybody knows about this problem, but as long as the girls do not say anything, they can't go there and, and, and get them out. That's also a very, very big problem. And um, yes, so we were threatened, but um, not too much. I mean, yeah. we just, yeah, moved on. And, um, we'll continue with the questions of the uh, audience because there are a lot of questions and uh, if, uh, if we lack of the questions, then I ask my questions. Mm -hmm. So we have also the question how the film affected other girls, uh, did they see it and did you achieve any social impact with this movie? I did. I, I think I did achieve some um, impact because I've been traveling with, um, with uh, this film through um, Germany a lot. And um, there were um, also girls uh, watching the film who were still in, in, in the prostitution and wanted to get out. And then they saw what happened to Milena and Rita and we talked and they also um, kind of told me this, this film would give them some power to, um, some empowerment to really think about what they're doing. And I think that is also a good point. On the other hand, I was talking to, 
or the film I, 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 I watched it with um, sex workers who really loved their job. And before um, they only like they had more the perspective of this is a great job. And after the film, they kind of also realized um, after and after talking a lot about it, um, they also realized, okay, that's their perspective. They love it, but there are also other situations and other women because before they were a little too pro. And um, yes, so I think um, it, um, I don't know what in the end this film can change, but I think um, through the three protagonists, through Milena and Rita, you, um, you really learn about the world you would never be able to step into. And you kind of go on a travel, on a voyage with them, which is also very emotional. And you, you, you learn about her world, about her reality. And that is a point where you can, you can, yeah, you can start from in whatever you're gonna do then. And I remember this trailer it's, uh, during my uh, journeys in Germany when I was a teenager and after the school when I was hitchhiking. And uh, but uh, is it still a huge phenomena? And uh, uh, or is just in certain areas? And there is also the question: Are uh, this kind of love in all Germany to find? Yes, um, it is. It is actually in this region where I come from, it's a lot. It's about every hundred meters you meet the caverns, but it is also over whole Germany. So there are areas in, in, in Germ Eastern Germany and in Southern Germany, actually everywhere they are. Um, sometimes they're cumulated on a, on a parking lot, but they are still there. And um, um, since, um, since it's legal, um, there's no need to abolish them. So, and um, actually it is for the girls, they actually like their caravans because it also, as absurd as it sounds, it's for them some kind of protection. They can choose the clients and there's nobody telling them you have to take this client and um, they don't have to work on the street. They, they as, as crazy the sounds, but for them, they actually l prefer this work in the caravan. Which for us, it's really crazy because it's in the in the dark forest. Um, but uh, for them, it's um, more comfortable than other situations. We have a question about the prostitution. So, do you think that prostitution should be illegal or rather regulated somehow? I think that is a very, very, very big question mankind has been struggling with for, for since the beginning of uh, this earth. And um, it is, a, I'm not the one to say it has to be um, forbidden or it is okay if it's legal. It is a very, very complex question. Um, you have to, it also has to be, it has to deal with a, you know, with this dedication of a, of a, of a woman, uh, of a, a feminist who says, it's my body, I want to do with it whatever I want. And if I want to work as a sex worker, that's my legal right. But on the other hand, there's human trafficking and we have to control it. And this is a very complex theme. And I don't think, um, <sighs> I don't know. It's um, like the more I get into this topic, the more I know it's even the more difficult it is. I don't know if a prohibition um, will, will, will solve anything, but you have to really regulate. You have really to put strict rules. And for example, one big step ahead was to, um, um, to, make, to make it illegal to be a, a pimp. Like, um, you know, somebody um, taking advantage of um, of this job, um, but still it's there, you know? It's just the executive part of it is still failing a lot. I think the law is, you know, you can talk about the law, but um, the execution of this law um, has to be a lot stronger and a lot more controlled. That's what I think. And there it is a real lack of, um, of, of that part. 
So we already talked that uh, it's legal in Germany, but uh, we also have questions. The question, why do you think that it's so normalized in your country? And uh, maybe maybe you can add something uh, to what you already told, because uh, um, the women are asking, uh, what do you think, what are the historical, social and cultural uh, reasons uh, for that? Uh -huh. um, I think um, prostitution was legalized in the 80s, in the 90s in Germany, and the situation was different by then. Um, it was legalized because it was also an expression of women, you know, um, wanting to do their job and about giving, you know, margin, marg not, not excluding um, women in prostitution, giving them rights, giving them a voice. It was in that time, it was a very good, uh, good sign, you know, but um, we have to say that back then they were all Germans. They had a German passport. They, they knew the German language. They could say if they wanted to get out, they, they kind of had the skills or the, 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 um, the tools uh, to find a way out, even though it was still hard. But um, now times have changed, borders are open, which are, is a good thing, but also um, yeah, that's what I meant, like the dead end of a globalized capitalism is um, when um, women from Eastern Europe and from Africa come here and get, um, get abused and get, um, you know, um, that, that is the biggest problem now. So, um, that's why Germany is really fighting with the with the with the liberal law they once um, installed because it's not working the way they wanted it back then. And do you think that uh, integration or better integration, uh, better uh, would be the solution to the problems of uh, sex? It workers? would be a step ahead. I mean, you can never say this will solu solve everything. They will always be you know um, a dark net and every and you know um, sadly probably um, abolish human trafficking is um, like the, the main goal um, but um, some kind of co control and you know um, it's um, giving the girls the chance to 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 know how they can also um, advance in, in Germany not working as a prostitute um, is a big is a big step ahead, and language is a big key, and um, rights and um, the, the the legal rights to stay here is also a big key, and in the end, the biggest key of all is that um, a united uh, Europe uh, where where um, where um, e where you have equal payment in all countries. But it's a long, it's a long way. It's not just there are so many strings attached. It's not just um, the question of prostitution. It's also many other things. Yeah. We will come back to this theme also. But uh, now we have questions, and I also want to ask some questions about the characters. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the main themes you are talking in the film is uh, abuse uh, of women. And uh, for example, uh, if we talk about Ushi, who who is if it's if, if it's okay to say that she's a pimp, um, this is my approach to that. But maybe it's not your approach is maybe different. And in the beginning of the film, she is kind of an antagonist. And then during the um, the course of the film, she becomes a protagonist, kind of protagonist. And when we got to know that she uh, she was a victim of sexual abuse uh, in childhood, and she was also a prostitute. And uh, so you decided to show her story in that kind of way that we and that we got to know her story kind of in the end. Yeah. And um, so my question is why? And also, why do you think it's so hard to get out of this system of this change? She's still there, even though she had this, um, yeah. this history of being prostitute. Yes. Um... The reason why I wanted Ushi's story to unravel towards the end is to show that everything is, um, is a system and it's a system of power and abuse. And 
once you meet Ushi, she's like the pimp who wants all the money and who wants to control everything and who's also appears as a racist and everything. And she's like so much the antagonist and you really don't like her. And then you kind of got, I force the viewer to, to get her to know better. And you don't really excuse what she's doing and the way she's behaving now but you kind of understand her way of life. You know, so many things went wrong in her life until in the end you find out she, she got abused at the age of 13 and was sold by her mother, which is like the only, like the biggest trust, break of trust you can have in your life. And so I wanted with Uchi to show that it is a system of power and abuse and which is not only like, I didn't want this category, okay, men, men are bad and abuse the women and women are all victims. I didn't want this because I, I really wanted to, to, to show um, the system and not the, the sex who is abusing the other sex because um, there's so much more to it. And so um, Ushi, it's a, it's a story about three women, women and Ushi kind of um, um, imitates the part a man would normally do. And um, so it's a very complex thing again. And um, the other question about why it is so hard to get out is um, once you're in, um, you, for example, that's why also this scene with Milena and the other Milena, the, the boxing Milena is so important when the boxing Milena, her friend offers her, hey, you can come over, I'll take care of you. I'll find you a job. Um, as, as a cleaner here. And Milena doesn't really uh, want it because um, it's also the money thing. You know, you, you kind of think, okay, I can, earn, I can earn 50 euros in half an hour. Um, in other jobs, I have to work um, half a day for it. Um, they think it's easy work, but it is not, you know? So it's, um, it's really difficult. And um, also this stigma, which is upon them. They once, uh, one girl told me she thinks she, it's very hard for her to get out and have a normal life because she thinks everybody sees, sees it. It's written on her, um, on her forehead. She has been working as a prostitute and she feels very, very uncomfortable. And so this stigma it has um, is um, something psychological, I think, um, which makes it so hard to break and get out. And um, yes. We have two questions about Milena, Bulgarian girl you just uh, talked about. So when Bulgarian girl told the truth to her friend about her job, how did you prepare for her, uh, her for that scene? How did you prepare her for that scene? Uh, was it your idea from, for her to confess? Mm -hmm. um, it, when we, we started shooting with Milena, we, um, when Milena told us, okay, she wants to make this film with us, she also told us she wants this film as a chance to get out of this job. So it was actually clear in the beginning that she was kind of clinch to us as a film team to, um, to make a change. So she also, which I think is very cool of her to also use us, you know, to get a step ahead. And which for us made it very good too, because we knew we were not just coming there, filming, filming here, her and um, her situation, but also trying to develop with her something. And so she was very open um, to make all these steps that also put a power or a force on her to get out afterwards. Um, we did not go there um, making interviews and filming filming her, we were actually um, kind of um, developing um, her situation and what she, she wants to do next with her together. And this one step when she, she always wanted to go to Berlin and visit her friend. And then she told us she wants to do it with us together. And she also wants to tell her friend. It's a very big need for her to tell her. And so before this evening, um, she 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 said us I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say it today I'm gonna I have to say it today, and um, so we were prepared. But when it actually happened, we didn't understand the word because we do not speak Bulgarian. But we kind of felt what was going on, and so um, 
also Milena gave us signs with her eyes. And we also, of course, we kind of felt what was going on. And so we were there too. And for her, um, it was very important for us to be there because she didn't want to be alone in this situation. Um, we felt a little bit afterwards because of her friend, because um, we witnessed something. She did not know what she was getting into it. But after this scene, we talked to her and if it was okay, and you know, this is, um, will be in the film because she, Milena told her before, um, her friend was asking her why, uh, why there's a film team with her. And she's like, oh, they are, they are just making a film about Bulgarians in, in Germany. And so we kind of made this clear after this scene and um, yeah. Yes, and uh, we have a few questions uh, which audience asked, but they are for the end of the uh, conversation. So if you want to ask something more, um, not about the future of, uh, of, of the characters, we will ask that in the end. But uh, I also wanted to ask you also about the characters. Uh, then uh, these women, when they uh, decided that they will participate in the film, uh, and uh, their families, uh, they didn't know what their job is. So uh, why do you think they decided to be part? Because uh, this film um, was premiered. It, it, was, it is still uh, um, being screened and that means that their families can get to know. But yeah, by now also. they know. By now they know also. By, by, by now they know. So they told them before the premiere of the film and or what and why you why you think they decided to be part of the film? As I already um, kind of mentioned, it was um, for them also a reason and put pressure on them to to get out. To leave. Mm. Mm, and um, then, mm, as far as I know, Rita has not told her family. And that's why I also do not sell the film to Netflix, even though they made me a very big offer. But that's, you know, the price you pay when you really, when you really um, owe your protagonist a very good film. You just don't give it to any to anyone. And because it, we do not want to be distributed in Nigeria and um, these these countries. But still, it's a long time ago now for them, and it would not break their um, um, it would not break their family bond because it's a long time ago now. Milena did not tell anyone before the premiere, but um, now now after lots of time has passed and she has a completely different life, um, her boyfriend knows and her brother knows and. That's her, 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 the family she has. And just, um, yes, so um, it is okay. It is okay. It is the past for them and it is okay. It is, um, they just don't talk about it, you know. So we have questions, are you still in contact with them? So that means yes. And so uh, they are out of the prostitution as I understood. Yeah, actually Rita was um, leaving when she was leaving in the film, it was not like that moment. We kind of made it a little bit for the camera uh, when she walks down the road. But actually, she was leaving the next day in the morning. And she would also stay two or three weeks with me uh, in Berlin then. And then went, went on her way uh, back to Italy. And now she's, I think, back in Nigeria. But, and she wants to go to the United States and she has lots of plans and she's completely out of, um, out of this um, totally. And uh, Milena too. And uh, Milena, I see from time to time, um, she, was, um, she was my babysitter for some time and for my little daughter. And now she has moved, she was living in Berlin. Now she has moved a little uh, to the suburb and we don't see that often. And in Ushi, um, <laughs> the Ushi I'm, actually quite good contact. Um, we talk every other month and she's retired now and she's with her dogs and she has always problems and troubles. It's always something else. It's not the buses anymore, but there's always something going on. <laughs> and I also wanted to 
ask you, maybe it's not the real question, but maybe just to think about um, what your thoughts are about that, that the society has, uh, what kind of uh, image society has on about prostitution? Because on the one hand, there are women who uh, comes from different countries who are struggling to survive and it's an uh, economical issue why they are in this job. And also we, there are victim victims of human trafficking, but there is a, also completely new wave which started started not now but a long time before of sex worker image which is very open which is uh, online uh, some of them are public figures and uh, icons for for some also so yeah. for example last year we had in a program a film uh, searching for eva uh, searching for eve uh, which is about searching the girl know the director she's a friend of Sir mine. yeah searching keep and director was here uh, visiting us in the film festival so it's about the girl who is a sex worker also is star in instagram so there are this kind of two images of the prostitution which is uh, they're very very different and the approach to 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 women and men working uh, uh, working there are very different. Why do you think it is like that? And just what do you think about that? It's actually kind of what I said uh, or mentioned before. I mean, there are two, two, different, two different reasons uh, and two different um, two, um, sides, you know? It's like comparing apples with bananas. It's completely different. If there's a woman um, who decides out of a free reason at the age of 25, um, after she she went studying and um, she, I want to be a sex worker because it's fun I like it it's quick money and it's cool you know there's nothing to it it's uh, her free decision and it's uh, it should be accepted and it should be respected but on the other hand they are this is the bananas and then are the apples and the apples is that are women forced into it and heavily forced into it and um, they 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 feel they, they are here, but they don't want it and they get into it and they, um, they are forced. And that is something completely different. And the biggest problem is that it's all put into one thing together. You know, this is prostitution, but what is prostitution? What is sex work? It has, one side has nothing to do with the others. And um, this has to be unraveled and separated a little bit. And so there are these two images about prostitution. I mean, I live in Berlin, a very liberal city. And um, I also have a friend who is a, um, a sex worker. And for her at school, she meets the guys in the hotels and she says, hey, you know, last night I earned from this rich guy 1000 euros. Um, but that is so, has so nothing to do with a woman from Bulgaria getting forced into this. It is, you know, you cannot um, put it into one um, bin. <laughs> it's um, so, um, that's why it's also so difficult to find one law for so different things, I think. And can you tell also about yourself, but about your, how did you felt and what was your emotional state during the shooting during the, the time uh, you were preparing and mm -hmm. then shooting the film? Yeah, when I, um, since I live in Berlin, you know, I have this more liberal approach to prostitution, but of course I knew there was sex trafficking um, before. So um, I think the circumstances under which the women are working are very difficult and very heavy and uh, not supportable. And um, that's also why I made the film, you know, because before they are like, they were like ghosts. Nobody would know about them, care about them. That's also why I made um, this film to make it uh, vis visible. And um, my approach was more from an artistic way. I um, never thought about, okay, I'm going to make a film about prostitution. I always thought I make a film about women who have a very, interesting and strange job and um, which is not maybe not even a job and they have a very uh, interesting life story and I tried to portray them in a in a way as if they were kind of iconic way or in a way they are not the victims but they are people like you and me and your friend who have 
problems, you who are love sick and you know uh, who have like normal problems too, but also this other side, and um, that was more my approach. Um, yeah, and how I felt about it all this time. Um, like my feeling about it, it would not be my choice of job, but I totally respect girls who, who do it. And um, on the other hand, I totally um, despect um, the situation when women are forced into it. And uh, it's not your, when we talked before the Q&A started, you said that it's not the first documentary you, you did. And uh, for me, it's interesting why you chose to, to make a films, to make a, not just films, to make documentaries. And uh, we were discussing that uh, uh, our festival goal and maybe your goal also is to start a discussion about the themes or about characters or something to start a discussion. So do you think that uh, it's uh, possible with a film, with a project to and in general, with a documentary to change something and why people should watch them, why they should uh, spend their Saturday <laughs> evening uh, listening to, to, to us and uh, discussing the topics and what do, what do you think about that? I think it is totally important to make documentaries because they show you a part of a world you normally don't know. Um, and um, I started uh, my being interested in, in documentaries when I uh, spent one year in Cuba, um, which is um, now more than 10 years ago. And there was a world I thought is so um, interesting and there were so many interesting stories you cannot imagine. And in this world, there are so interesting characters um, and stories you cannot invent like a correct character like Ushi, you cannot imagine. I mean, you, it is, it is um, so, so, so crazy and absurd. But on the other hand, there is so much um, you know, going wrong in this world that you really, as a, as you, you have to make films about it to offer, to offer different perspectives and um, to let people who, who do not have the possibility to to step into the world of somebody else and see through their eyes on our world, you know? That's why I stepped into the, the love mobiles and had from the love mobile point of view, uh, the view on, on our world, because it's completely different. And I think this change of perspective is something that, um, that is a very, very necessary thing to do in our society. And that's what uh, can offer you a documentary. And that's why I think it's so important. And I don't know if films can change the world, but they can, they can might maybe subconsciously mm, draw you into something to get interested in it. For example, now you've got to know Milena, Rita and Ushi, uh, three very interesting women and um, they touched you and um, you made a went on a voyage with them and maybe this kind of subconsciously um, leads you into, into a direction where you are getting interested in changing and you know getting interested in these topics. And that's the power of documentaries, I think. They are very, very crucial and um, important for our society because it's always people you see, you know, it's not just a written word, it's not a fact, it's a person you get to know. Hmm. If the audience wants to ask something, some questions, there is uh, the last chance to ask because we are getting to the end. But uh, I just uh, understood that I wanted to ask something which you already a bit told, but um, uh, about uh, Mm, the reason why you're not showing, uh, the reason why you're not selling the mm, film to Netflix, that uh, because uh, you don't want them, uh, you don't want the audience in Nigeria to see, and because you, uh, because of the uh, respect to the uh, to their character, and during the um, when you prepare and 
directors prepare for a documentary, for me, it's very interesting and important topic, how to show the characters with respect and also to think that their uh, work can change their life in a very different way. It could be not always the positive way. So, um, so then you think about new projects, new characters. You said that most of the characters are women in your project. So did you think through a lot that do, do I really you know, need to put the people in the position to be on screen? So what are your thoughts about that? Uh, do you, are you referring to level B or to other? No, in general, in general. Um, if I really think it's necessary to put this on the screen to this difficult situation. Do you mean thinking about uh, the person and uh, just yes i think you always need somebody if you really want to tell a story and um, like as we were talking about making a change you always need somebody who has lived through it you need re really need to adapt to some life and that's why you need these people who, who have experienced it in order to show it and um, it was a very it was always a very difficult situation with this film. I also, I did not give it to any um, distribution, even though they were offering, many distribution were offering me to take the film. And um, I did not, I could not give them, give it up. You know, it's this, my film and I kind of have to protect it. I have to protect the, um, the, the, the women and it can be shown on festivals, um, but it should not, be on Netflix forever, you know? That is something that is not possible because it's, it's you, you always deal with human lives, you know? It's, you always still have to remember, it's not just a film, it's, it was their life, even though they're now okay with it. Um, so I'm not about giving up um, the rights on this film, even for much money, it's not really worth it. And, um, but for my next film, I hope I'll be a little more, a little smarter, I'll find the protagonists who are um, who are uh, not in this diligent situation. I already have um, a new project. One is about a girl in Hong Kong, and um, another um, is about um, three three girls um, from Cuba, three three dancers uh, from the Cabaret Tropicana. Um, but I can't go on shooting right now because you know you can't go travel anywhere now. But um, Yes. Um, did I answer the question more or less? Yes. This is this is exactly what I wanted um, for you to, um, to to answer me, because this is what I'm always thinking about um, preparing the program. Uh, mm -hmm. This is not at all not the real truth. This is not what I'm always thinking, but this is what I always have to remind myself mm -hmm. uh, thinking because because it's a uh, real life, uh, real people. And uh, you also sometimes need to think about the security also of them. Mm. And uh, I also wanted to just say something because you were yes. asking me if uh, documentaries are important. And then I thought, I, I really like the, the name of the festival. It's called Inconvenient Films. And that is so, so right, because you have to be inconvenient sometimes, you know, to, to put the finger in the wound. And that is what documentary does. I mean, there are also all kinds of documentaries, also funny documentaries, you know, um, but it is also something inconvenient truth you have to show. And um, yeah, that's what documentaries are also for. Yeah, and then uh, I think it's important to stay for, for a few hours with a topic which is very hard to handle also uh, for, for you and emotionally maybe, but uh, I think it's uh, it's the right way to spend the time. <laughs> and, uh, but we took uh, quite a lot of your time. So I will, um, I think we have to end the, the um, conversation. And I just wanted to encourage uh, and uh, the audience to see another film, which we also have about uh, prostitution. Uh, the approach is completely different. Uh, it is called uh, Whore Like Me, Kaksha uh, Kipash in Lithuanian, and it's about a person, a woman, 
who was uh, the victim of uh, human trafficking. Uh, she's from Hungary and uh, she was trafficked to Israel. And uh, so what we are watching, then the film starts, her struggle to, um, to get the evidence that this thing happened because she was working as a prostitute when she was, uh, when she got to Israel. So it's about her struggle to, to, to show the, to, to get the proof that this thing happened to me, please believe me. It's a very good film, completely different approach. And uh, if you're st interested in, in, in this theme, please watch that. And uh, I wanted to thank you a lot for your film, for your work and for the time you spent during that, this, and uh, and also about uh, uh, I really appreciate the approach uh, and uh, the sensitivity uh, you showed to the women and respect and how they're on the scene on the screen. So thank you, thank you very much. And thank I hope you, we'll thank you for choosing the film and for this nice interview. And thanks for the audience uh, for watching and being interested and for all these um, very interesting questions and. Um, if you have any more questions, just um, don't hesitate contacting me. It's um, yeah, no problem. <laughs> Hope to see you next year or, or 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 when you have a new film here. With the, the next States. film, yes. I hope yeah, the situation year. will be we will be all be able to travel again. That'd be great. <laughs> and uh, if audience like the film, there is a you have a possibility to uh, vote because we are uh, also. Uh, have um, there is a competition uh, and uh, people everybody can vote that vote and uh, choose their uh, best film of the festival which will get the public uh, prize that the public chose the winner yes thank you. thank you very much all of you who joined and thank thank you elke and have a really nice evening Thank you. And uh, I just, uh, for, sorry, sorry, I forgot to say that we had not just questions, but uh, we had um, we had some. Uh, thank you for a very interesting documentary, and uh, uh, yes, and some more, uh, some more uh, reviews that it was great and uh, that people appreciate your work. Thanks a lot. And, really happy. Yeah, and one uh, uh, one uh, month has wrote that it was very thought provoking. So thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Much. That's what I wanted. <laughs> thank mm -hmm. you. Bye. Bye. Have a nice evening. Bye.